Hello, this is uh, Eugene Blanchard from TelecomWorld101.com and today we're going to talk about voice over IP and the DHCP protocol. Um, standard disclaimer here, this is a copyrighted video. Uh, you're free to, uh, to show, display, um, link to this YouTube site, uh, but you are not allowed to edit, copy, uh, claim this as your own because that's just wrong. All right, so let's see. Let's look at uh, voice over IP and DACP. First thing, what is DACP? Well, it's a dynamic host configuration protocol used to automatically assign network parameters to PCs, laptops, smartphones, PDAs, etc. It saves time. In a large network, there may be hundreds or thousands of PCs, laptops, smartphones, PDAs. IP phones, etc. It would be an endless job manually configuring each device. And just imagine if your network changed and you'd have to go back and start all over again. Maybe if you like job security, it would be the way to go. What happens to roaming users? Well, if you add that to the, uh, the mix, there's many devices that roam all over the network. They move from Wi-Fi to Wi-Fi networks. Every time they move from one Wi-Fi network to Wi-Fi network, you have to reconfigure the IP address. Um, where I work, we have several different buildings. Every time you go into a building, you're into a different network. Every time you go into a room, you're into a different subnet. Right. So what happens is DHCP allows us to move our computers all over the network and get auto configuration. So how does DHCP work? Well, when a network client first connects to the network, it sends out a DHCP discovery packet. It's a broadcast IP address, so it's 255.255.255.255. And it's looking for a DHCP server, and it's asking for an IP address. A DHCP server is listening on the network, and it hears the discovery broadcast and responds with a DHCP offer. A DHCP offer consists of an IP address, a subnet mask, gateway, and DNS servers. The client replies with a DHCP request for the offered IP address and maybe it'll ask for some options that are unique to its configuration. The server responds with an acknowledgement reserving the IP address and providing any options that were requested. So if we take a look at this uh, a typical ladder um, flowchart, we'll see the client does a discovery broadcast it's basically looking for a server and saying, um, I'm looking for an IP address and other parameters. Uh, server sends a unicast back and it's an offer. And it's an offer of IP address uh, and some basic parameters. The client will request the IP offer, or, I'm sorry, will request the IP address from the server. And uh, it might also uh, request some options. Uh, the server will acknowledge that that IP address has been reserved for it. So what's this got to do about voice over IP? Well, an IP phone uses DHCP to get its IP address, but it also uses the options to request the IP address of several different services. A TFTP server is one. Um, you can actually have an option to indicate the registrar or the PBX, NTT, NTP time server for network time, and more. Now, the uh, important one is the TFTP server because it allows you to auto-configure the IP phone. So what happens is once the phone gets a TV, TFTP IP address, uh, it can download its configuration and, and it can download uh, firmware, um, a file containing an extension number and secret, um, time settings, is it Pacific uh, uh, PST, PST time, Pacific Standard Time or Mountain Standard Time, uh, custom programming of the buttons on the, on the phone, uh, the PBX's IP address is a good thing to know, and, and a lot more. A TFTP server becomes a central location for all IP phones to grab their configuration files from. So now we've got one area that we can put all the, the files in. Uh, we can update the firmware and global configuration files to all phones at the same time. So what happens is that uh, typically on a TFTP server is that you have the firmware for the phones, uh, then you have global configuration files for the phone type, 
So if it's a 7960, Cisco 7960 phone, you'd have global configurations for that. And then you have unique um, configuration files for each individual phone, usually identified by the MAC address. Uh, what you can do is uh, there's uh, different devices like Endpoint um, Manager which allows you to configure all the phones and you can actually tell the phones to reboot. When they reboot they go through the whole process again and download the new firmware and global configuration files. So you can update it, all the firmware at once if you want. Schedule it for midnight. At midnight we're going to reboot all the phones with the new firmware. Okay. Now something that happens with the DHCP uh, IP address is it's leased. It's leased for a, a short period of time or a long period of time. It could be uh, 50 minutes uh, or it could be 7 days. So the IP addresses are leased by the DHCP server for a specific period of time. When that time starts running out, the client has to renew to maintain the IP address. He has to re request the uh, uh, from the DHCP to hold on to that IP address. Now. Why would you do this? Well, if you're in a, a network, um, like a public network, like an educational institute, what you'll do is you'll lease it for 50 minutes. Um, and the reason is, is that as students come into classrooms, they're only typically in a classroom for 50 minutes to two hours or three hours. So there's no use in tying up that IP address for the subnet that's in that classroom for seven days or seven because you'll run out of IP addresses. Uh, another thing is that if you're in a public space, that maybe what you want to do is uh, lease it for a short time so someone doesn't bring in a server and uh, starts running a server on your network, spamming the rest of the world. Uh, now, something important is that different brands of IP phones use different options to, to uh, to talk to to indicate the TFTP server, so uh, a t very typical option is option 66, and that would be indicate a single IP address for one TFTP server. Option 150 is used by Cisco, and you can actually have uh, a primary and secondary TFTP server. Um, some phones like to use option 159. Now, uh, something interesting is that Cisco phones expect the IP address to be delivered in a hexadecimal format, right? Um, where Astra phones expect it to be an ASCII format. So sometimes you can run into problems if you have different brands of uh, phones on the same network. Uh, one thing you can't do is use a PC to check DHCP options for an IP phone. What happens is that when a PC runs through its DHCP um, procedure and it, it sends out uh, a request, it doesn't have the facilities to uh, as an example, request the TFTP server option. It's not part of uh, the PC, right? So what you'd have to do is use a PC to sniff the network using something like Wireshark and to capture an actual con conversation between an IP phone and a DHCP server. So you can't use a PC directly to check what the DHCP options are given out because they're only requested by specific devices. So that was voice over IP and DHCP. And uh, I'm Eugene Blanchard for telecomworld101.com, and I hope this was helpful.